Chapter 6 Old Da's Warning There was nothing much wrong with Old Da at first, just a chill that he took after getting his feet wet one day. But it was soon plain that he could not throw off this chill, and Janet altered the sleeping arrangements so that he would have more room to toss and turn at night. Elspeth, she decided, would move in beside herself while Robbie took Elspeth's bed. Yet even when this was done, and old Da had a bed to himself, he still not could get a peaceful night's sleep. His bones shook with the fever that was on him. His breath came hard and painful. Watching him, Janet feared for the worst, and quietly, without telling the young people what was about, she sent word for Peter of his condition. Each night, after that, she lay awake for a long time, uneasily listening to the way the old man's breath wheezed and rattled in his chest. Through the day, Robbie and Elspeth took turns to sit with him, but it was Robbie's company he liked best. And it was a while he sat by the box bed holding the hot, paper-thin old hand between his own strong young hands that Robbie at last also realized his old da was dying. This was a hard fact to face, and what made it harder was that old Da seemed so anxious to talk to him, yet still could do no more than wheeze out a few words at a time. Robbie kept telling him to rest, not to bother talking, but still old Da persisted, as if what he had to say was important, even urgent, and Robbie got the strangest feeling that he was trying to utter a warning of some kind. For two days this went on. Then, on the evening of the second day, Old Da said in a clear and perfectly normal voice, Robbie, listen to me. Robbie saw that his eyes were wide open and quite calm. He waited for the next word, and Old Da said, I should have told you all of this, but I wasn't sure. Now I'm dying, and I must speak. Don't trust him, Robbie. Don't trust him. Don't trust who? asked Robbie, bewildered by this. And with his voice getting fainter now, Old Da answered, Finn Learson. But why not? Robbie demanded. You've got to have a reason for saying that, Old Da. Why shouldn't I trust him? Old Da struggled to sit up. This is the reason, he began. It has to do with gold, Robbie, and dancing, and the crystal palace under the sea. Old Da's breath was wheezing painfully again, and Robbie was alarmed by this. It seemed to him, too, that the old man was now talking very strangely, and so he said quickly, I'll call my mum. No, my breath is going exclaimed old Da, clutching at him. Listen, first, then tell the others. Tell Elspeth, she's the one in danger. Mom, interrupted Robbie, shouting, for he was in real fear now over the way old Da was panting. Come quick, Mom! It has happened before, old Da's wheezing voice persisted faintly. Listen, Robbie, there was another stranger like Finn Learson. He came ashore the way Finn Learson did. And the story about him was that he, Old Da's voice, faded to nothing. He made a great effort to gather his breath again. And Janet came in at the door as he gasped. The story was that he... Story! exclaimed Janet with a scandalized look on her face. What's this, Robbie? Have you no heart at all that you can let your poor old Da waste his last breath on stories for you? I didn't want him to do it. Robbie protested. I tried to hush him, but he would speak. Well, he's quiet now, said Janet, looking down at old Da. And indeed he was quiet, for the effort to speak in the Robbie had quite exhausted him. Away you go then, Janet went on, and I'll sit with him until he sleeps. Robbie nodded. Then he leaned down to old Da and said softly, 
Good night, old Da. Old Da looked up at him without making any further attempt to speak, but there was something in his eyes that made Robbie add, And I'll remember what you said, and I'll do as you told me. Old Da smiled, just a faint shadow of a smile, but enough to show he had understood. And Robbie went away feeling puzzled by what had happened, yet relieved that old Da was no longer distrusting himself by trying to talk. That night, however, he found himself, he found he himself could not sleep for thinking of what the old man had said. And late, very late, when Janet and Elspeth were asleep and even old Da's breathing had eased, he slipped from his bed and went outside. It was not dark then, of course. Otherwise, he would have never have gone out like this, for it is in the hours between sunset and sunrise that the trows are free to work their magic. The Shetlands lie so far north, however, that there is no darkness there in summer. All that happens is a dimming of the light when the sun sets, but the colors stay in the sky for a while. Then the sky becomes white for an hour or two before the next sunrise, and it was into this sort of white night that Robbie ventured. A quick glance around showed him there were no trows in sight, but just in case there were any lurking invisibly around, he did as old Da had taught him to do in such situations. He made the sign of the cross on himself and said aloud, God be about me and all that I see. Immediately then he knew he was safe, for these are words the trolls cannot bear to hear, and so they scatter instantly at the sound of them. Without bothering any further about trolly magic, therefore, he climbed the hill above the Vaux, and sitting down on the grass, there he tried to sort out all the questions that had kept running through his mind. Had old Da really been trying to tell him something? Something important? Had he really been trying to give warning of some danger that threatened Elspeth? Or had he simply been raving in the grip of his fever? Robbie stared down at the silky gray of the Vaux's water, noticing the occasional seal which surfaced there, and vague memories of the stories old Da used to tell him when chasing through his head. A crystal palace under the sea? Could there be such a thing? There was another stranger like Finn Learson? What stranger? And what had this other man to do with the crystal palace of the great Selkie? Robbie got tired at last of asking himself such questions, for he could not arrange any answers to them in the way that made sense. Besides which, he told himself, it was time he was going home again. There was a wash of pale gold across the white of the northeastern sky, and a rim of brighter gold on the horizon as the sun touched it again. Dreamily almost on the point of sleep at last, Robbie sat watching this rim of gold grow wider and brighter, and then was suddenly jerked wide awake again by the sight of his father's sixerine coming into the Vaux. There was no doubt either that it was his father's sixerine, for the sun was, gild was gilding the heads of the rowers, and he could see it gleaming red off Nick Anderson's red hair. Another moment or two, and he could also see the head of hair that was his father's head, rising into the light, then dropping back into the shadows, when he bent to the oar. With a leap of excitement at his heart, Robbie gathered himself to rise and run down to the shore. But even as he stirred, a sound broke the white and gold silence of the morning, the sound of Tam howling at the door of the Henderson's house. And without being able to tell how or why this should be so, Robbie knew in that instant that his old Da was dead. On and on the howls went, and supposing his own life had hung on it, Robbie could not have moved then. As still as if he had been part of the hillside itself, he sat watching the boat coming to rest, and with all the men climbing out of it. His father was first out, jumping clear even before the boat's pro touched the shingle. 
and racing up the slope to the house. The other men stayed to beach the boat. Then they too hurried up the slope. All except one, Ravi saw, the big, dark-haired one who was Finn Learson. But that, he argued, feeling his mind beginning to come alive again. That was only natural. Finn Learson was no kin or neighbor of old Da. He was a stranger, an incomer to blackness. And it was not proper for a stranger to thrust himself into a house of mourning. Yet still, the dark figure by the boat seemed somehow threatening to Robbie. And old Da's words rang in his mind. Don't trust him, Robbie. Don't trust him. Then Finn Learson lifted his head and looked up the hill to where Robbie sat. He moved and very leisurely began to climb the hill towards him. Now, Robbie told himself, now is the time for him to move, to run down the hill towards the house, to his father and mother and Elspeth, to his friend Nickel and all the other men, to the people he knew and trusted. And then he asked himself why. Why should he run? What did he have to fear from Finn Learson? There was no answer to this question. There was nothing except a big man coming towards him, dark and tall against the sun, and fear in his heart, a fear he could not understand or explain. Finn Learson was almost up upon him now, and still he sat where he was. Then Finn Learson was standing looking down at him, and saying in his deep, pleasant voice, The news is bad, it seems. Aye, Robbie answered flatly. Whole Da is dead. That's bad. That is bad, said Finn Learson, sighing and shaking his head. Robbie stared up at him, trying to make out the expression on his face, but the sun was still behind Finn Learson and it was only a patch of shadow that met Robbie's eyes. There was a long silence. Then Finn Learson spoke again, still very mildly and pleasantly. Were you much with him before he died, Robbie? Why, Robbie wondered to himself. Why did Finn Learson want to know that? Old Da did like my company, he said out loud. I sat with him a lot. I know, I know, you are his favorite, Finn Learson said this so soothingly that Robbie felt sudden tears pricking his eyelids. For a moment, indeed, he almost forgot to feel wary. Then, Finn Learson dropped to one knee beside him, and for the time Robbie saw his face. And he told you things, didn't he, Robbie? The face said. Its voice was still quiet and soothing. The face itself was young and handsome. Yet still Robbie shrank back from it, for the eyes, the gleaming dark eyes of the face, were hard as stone, and he was mortally afraid of them. What did he tell you, Robbie? The face persisted, and with old Dawes, Don't trust him. Don't trust him ringing now like a pearl of bells in his head. Robbie gathered every ounce of courage he possessed and answered firmly, nothing. My old Da told me nothing.